thank you so much. Now we have 70 of you here. In fact, we have um, 135 of 36 registrants. So we believe that there will be more people joining us. As Adam said, do we want to start? Yes, because uh, we have a very tight schedule. Um, really thank for the uh, colleagues uh, volunteering to share um, your experience uh, from this semester. So we will have, um, let me show you the, the program. And uh, Justin will also um, show you the, um, the link to the uh, program, which is uh, showing on the screen. Uh, but you can also see the link to this program uh, in the chat. All right. So, um, so we are going to have 12 groups of uh, colleagues from um, uh, different universities to share with us their experience uh, in this semester um, using um, technologies or, or modifying the assessment and also uh, the techniques um, for online teaching. Um, and there will be a different, different part uh, within the two hours. So you can see that here. The first part is on online teaching techniques. All right, so um, after a few presentations, we will have a five minute discussion. So, and then uh, here you can see that we have the different arrangement. And then uh, in between the first part and the second part, we have a 10 minute break. And during that time, we will have some live music. So we hope that this will be a good sharing session and also an informal discussion and um, also for us to get together uh, at this time at the end of the semester. So, and at the end, um, we have a session on collaboration um, with a group sharing about the, the project and also we will have the, uh, the head and directors uh, to join us. In fact, most of them are here already and uh, to discuss with us um, about the plans and uh, future directions. Okay, so let me also introduce my, uh, the other two facilitators, Adam. Hello, uh, my name's Adam Forrester. I'm, I'm at the PolyU and thank you all for coming. And um, one more, Blanche. Yep, uh, my name is Blanche. I'm from the Education University. Thank you very much for coming. Yes, thank you so much. So let's, let's get started with the first uh, group. So uh, Caitlin from PolyU. So I'll just stop sharing here. Oh, I forgot to mention that we have five minutes for each group. So we would give um, um, like a warning to say uh, the last five seconds, and then we will have to um, unmute after 10 seconds over the five minutes. So as, um, you know, to, to mute, sorry, to mute uh, the presentation. And so as we can really move on um, quickly. So... Okay, so Caitlin, over to you, and, and if everyone can just also mute your microphones while someone's presenting, so that it's more clear for everyone. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Sorry. Um, uh oh. <laughs> I can't get the whole screen. Um, I don't know what's happened. Caitlin, I think it's okay like it is, so just carry on. Oh, it, it looks right. fine. Okay. okay, I can't see my PowerPoint now. <laughs> um, all right, sorry. Oh, can I um, start again? <laughs> yeah, yeah, start again, please. All right. All right, so my five minutes starts now. Okay. Um, so what I wanted to share with you uh, this afternoon was one of the online activities that I did with the students. Um, like many of you, I strove to engage the students um, during the online semester. I did a, a wide variety of activities and this was um, one that I thought worked particularly well. So I had four um, writing courses this semester and what I asked the students to do for this activity was become the teacher and actually teach a little bit of the material. So the instructions that the students got were 
quite simple. So I just ask them to do a maximum of 10 minute presentation. Remember these were writing courses. And I asked the students to use the student notes. And I said, you know, they could make a PowerPoint, use YouTube, uh, make a Kahoot, whatever. But they had to do an activity for the class. So I divided part of the unit up into sections, as you can see. So the first bit was me. And then those um, strange names like Beauty and the Beast and Hamburger, etc. the names of the groups, the students had already um, been put into groups and given themselves a uh, name. So my rationale for this was that this was review material, it wasn't new. These are second and third year students. So they'd already, when I looked at the material, I thought, oh, you know, it's so dry. And um, they already had done ELC academic English. So this was just review, it wasn't new input. And it was covering things like plagiarism and um, citing, uh, summarizing, quoting, this kind of thing. Um, and I also wanted the students to actually engage in a deeper level with the materials rather than listening to me doing gap fills. Um, so just sort of get into the materials a little bit on a deeper level. And also listen to someone different. I mean, this was week nine, so they'd spend a lot of time listening to me. Um, I didn't ask them to turn their mics on, but I was kind of hoping that I might hear some of their voices. And I also wanted something that was more learner, learner driven rather than teacher driven. So that was the rationale. Um, I was pleasantly surprised at how seriously the students took it. Um, it wasn't assessed, it was just an activity. They had one week, um, to prepare and remember it's a writing course so nothing to do with um, speaking but they uh, were concerned when members of their group weren't participating they were emailing me they emailed their powerpoints which I hadn't asked them to do so they took the whole thing quite seriously and they actually used presentation skills so these are some of the slides that the students produced and when I looked at them, a lot of them were very similar to what I would do with the materials. So they took the student materials, they made a, a PowerPoint. When they were speaking, there were little errors and sometimes you know, their English wasn't that great, but the PowerPoint carried it. And also, um, they all had their microphones on, bar one group. And I had 19 groups because I did this with four classes. So I got to actually hear the students. And it was really exciting. What was exciting was listening to them talking about things like plagiarism that we drum into them. And, and to hear the students saying, you know, if you don't acknowledge the source, uh, there's plagiarism issues here. And to hear them saying it rather than me was um, very refreshing. They had some good activities. Um, they had, most of them did a Kahoot and they were pretty accurate because sometimes, you know, Kahoots can lead to ambiguous answers. And they also took some of the activities, uh, one or two of the activities from the student materials and used those. Just um, to note, I didn't give them the answers, and this is maybe something that I would question, but when they'd finished their little presentation, we went through the answers and through the um, PowerPoints and negotiated what they thought the answers were. So actually it was quite um, an interesting uh, activity just to negotiate why they came up with the answers. Caitlin, 10 seconds left. Oh, here's the issues. <laughs> um, some students didn't participate. The answers weren't always correct. I just want to go to the very last slide. Um, in reflection, uh, just one thing that I really thought is important is to realize that these students, second, third year students, they know a lot of this material. So rather than a lot of teacher input, it's that age old thing of less teacher talk and more time for the students to do their activities. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> thank you. Then Alison, yeah. Alison from uh, 
Alison, Sidiu. Sidiu, yes. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, great. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you, Caitlin. I'm under pressure now to get through this in <gasps> five minutes. I hope you can see my PowerPoint. Can you? Yes? Okay, great. Um, so I wanted to sh share how I used the poll, the one that's integrated in Zoom, to encourage my students to evaluate and consequently improve uh, their own teamwork. So this activity can actually be done in a face-to-face -face classroom as well, using something like um, Poll Everywhere. But I didn't think of it until we were thrust into this online environment. So this is my context. Um, my course required students to work on a semester-long project uh, in Teams. So halfway through the semester, after submitting their first piece of work, and receiving their marks, there's an ideal opportunity really to pause and um, have the students reflect on their team working skills. So the uh, intended learning outcome is for students to evaluate their team's performance and hopefully therefore to improve the quality of their teamwork and therefore their output for the remaining stages of their project. They have a couple of more assessed tasks to do. However, when I thought about this, I thought that um, I myself would find it quite difficult to discuss my peers' performance with my peers in an online environment, especially if I didn't know them very well. So uh, I looked for a way to, to lead into such a discussion to help get my students started. And my solution was to use a poll to gather students' general feelings about their teamwork so far. And as this poll was anonymous, students were encouraged to be honest. I then published the poll results for the whole class to see and used these results as a lead-in to a discussion about the students' team working skills in breakout rooms. So I hoped this discussion would gradually become more specific and focus on their own performances within their own teams and result in a realistic and targeted action plan going forward. So here are the questions that I asked in the poll. Uh, these questions had two objectives. Firstly, I wanted to activate students' thoughts and reflections about their team's efforts. But secondly, I hoped to provide them with some concepts or vocabulary um, to guide them, to help them in their ensuing discussion. So after a couple of minutes, I published the results on the screen. Uh, and then I asked students to take a photo or a screenshot because I don't think they can see the results when I um, put them into their breakout rooms. And here are the discussion questions that I asked students to discuss in their breakout rooms, so within their teams. And these questions, I hope you can see, move from the more general through to the more specific. Uh, I think it's important to set a time limit to encourage students to get on with it. Uh, and you can do this when you create the breakout rooms and then students have a little countdown timer that lets them know how much time they've got left for the discussion. Uh, also, I think it's only fair to make it clear at the beginning that students will be sharing the results of their discussions later in the main room. Uh, again, you could ask students to take a photo of these questions or you could post them in the chat box, which I believe they can see when they're in their breakout rooms. So how did it go? Were the intended learning outcomes achieved? Well, unfortunately, not for everybody. Rather frustratingly, some teams did not engage um, in the topic in the breakout rooms. So I did manage to visit them all and some of them were sitting there with their muted mics. Um, but once I got the discussion going, they did chat. But more positively, several teams did discuss quite productively and generated some quite meaningful practical action plans for improving their teamwork for the remaining assignments. And actually those who didn't have much to say in the breakout rooms were at least able to learn from the summaries from the other groups when, when they shared them back in the main room. 
uh, I have to admit that I didn't ask students specifically what they thought about this activity, but several of them did write comments in their reflections at the end of the semester um, about how they had changed their way of working. Alison, sorry, about five, minutes, five seconds left. After submitting their first document. So I'm going to say that the activity was successful. I'm speaking faster now, sorry. So I did think how else we could apply this, this idea and there are a few answers on the screen there. Thank you, I hope that was useful. Thank you very much, thank yes, you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Yes, then we have Dorin from uh, Hong Kong UST. Dorin, please. I do apologize yes. for interrupting everyone, but we have to keep to a time limit. Um, sorry, I think, um, can Alison stop sharing the screen so that I can share mine? Thank Great. you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, so hello everyone, I'm Doreen, I'm from UST. Um, today I'd like to share with you just some techniques about um, how to engage my students in an online learning environment. So um, in UST, we also use Zoom. In Zoom, to engage students, I think um, we're all encouraged to use different features, for example, like the whiteboard icons and the participants box, chat box, polling, etc., which you're all very familiar with right now. And um, however, um, well, but I just learned that actually they worked well in other universities, but with my students, it seems that um, they didn't work well. I would say that like my students actually lost their interest in using these features quite quickly. And gradually they became even non-responsive. Um, technically, um, I cold call them and that worked at the beginning, but also its effectiveness faded gradually. Perhaps they saw the point that the class would go on. Um, anyways, without their responses. So, and I couldn't do anything to them when they were, when, when, when we were in a remote environment. So, um, I mean, to sustain their engagement, I try to enhance their sense of belonging in this particular online community, um, which is their language classes now, by having them to share responsibilities. So um, I task them for virtual classroom management as my students actually love to help in classroom management. And I gave them tasks in addition to the academic tasks. So um, after trying different things, I found that my students enjoyed the following the most. For academic tasks, I asked them to find teaching materials in groups to help complete a lesson. The idea was more or less the same, like turning them into the instructors in a class. Um, and by doing so, um, they could see the importance of the completion of their tasks to other students. They bore more responsibility and thus they were more engaged in the lessons. And for virtual classroom management tasks, um, instead of having me cold calling them all the time, which didn't really work well in my classes, um, I asked students to appoint um, the next respondent for questions discussed in an academic task. At first, I thought that was a kind of childish gesture to do, um, but surprisingly, that's the little task that they enjoyed the most um, in the second half of the semester. And uh, they looked forward to the moment to be their turn to pick the next students to answer questions. And they got excited gradually. And, um, but to avoid having them calling their friends in class all the time, I then made use of the break room numbers. Since every single class I put them into the break rooms um, randomly. So they did not know who were really in their group. Um, so I asked them to, uh, instead of asking them to name a student, I asked them to pick a number within a range. For example, on the day, then I had like six groups and I asked them to pick a number from one to six. And then um, I kept eliminating the chosen number, which got them excited. I didn't know why, but, um, and uh, they liked it. And um, as I said, surprisingly that worked well. And uh, so, yeah, and, uh, and other thing that I asked them to do was to task students randomly to take notes in the chat box. 
um, as we all know that there were so many things happening on the screen. So um, while students prefer to have annotation in the chat box to follow the lessons, um, but we couldn't help when we were too busy with you know, a lot of stuff handled, being handled on the screen. So uh, then I task students randomly. I call students randomly to help to take notes. With that, uh, they became more attentive during the lessons and because um, they knew that they would be called up anytime to be the note taker. And um, I think, um, again, to my surprise, these kind of little tasks for um, classroom management worked well in my uh, classrooms. So um, these are more or less the some techniques that I found that worked well in my classes. So uh, I hope these are going to be, you know, little helpful tips to all of you. Thank you. Yes, great. Thank you so much. Right. So um, thank you, um, Caitlin, um, Dorin, and also Alison uh, from three um, different centers. Now we have five minutes for uh, discussion. So feel free, anybody, to give uh, suggestions, comments, or ask questions. Uh, hi, my name is Louisa from uh, Hong Kong U. I got a question for Doreen. Uh, I really like um, the ideas you shared with us just now. Uh, I, could you tell us how you got the students to find teaching materials? Uh, to prepare teaching materials. Can you tell us a, a little bit about uh, what they actually did? Oh, yes. Um, actually, I think it's more like um, any jigsaw activities that we could have in many of our courses. So um, uh, most of the time in our physical classrooms, we just divide up maybe um, the, the, the questions and the tasks in parts and ask them to go, you know, and, and search for uh, information. And um, on top of those that they prepared in the, the students' notes, okay? Because now what they could have is the, the, the prepared student notes um, on the screen. Um, I ask them to look for additional information about the topic being discussed on the spot. Mm -hmm. um, when students actually love those ad hoc kind of um, um, search, internet search, so um, that's how I conducted those um, uh, uh, kind of tasks, yes. Mm. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. I've got a question for, uh, for Alison. Hello. Hi, hi, Diana. Alison, hi, thank you for your presentation. <laughs> Thanks for listening. About the, uh, the outcome of the questionnaire findings, uh, can you tell me briefly, I mean, uh, the findings of the poll? Ah, so you mean what stu how students evaluated their own teamwork? Yeah, I mean, those questions, I mean, the findings. So how they, how they answered them, you mean? Uh, well, they tended to stick in the middle. Um, so, so the first question was, how satisfied are you with your teamwork so far this semester? Nobody said they were very unsatisfied and nobody said they were extremely satisfied. Um, so they fell within the middle range. Yes. Uh, and the other two questions were, which aspects of teamwork are you most or least satisfied with? Um, let me try and remember. They were least satisfied with planning and setting and uh, meeting deadlines. Uh -huh. <laughs> so they actually had something practical to work with. So we, we discussed how, how they can organize themselves a bit better, um, look at the bigger picture, set themselves deadlines, perhaps have somebody to chase others up to make sure they are meeting those deadlines that they set. Um, yeah, so that was those were the main findings, if I remember rightly. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Any one last question? Uh, you can also put your questions in the chat box, and uh, we will also have an overall discussion at the very end of the whole um, session today. I, I just have a quick question for Doreen. If that's okay. Yes. 
Hi, yeah. Um, thank you for your great um, ideas. Also, Caitlin and Allison. That's really, they're really interesting. Um, Doreen, my question for you is just really technical. I really like your, the, um, the, your audio and the mic sound. Did the university provide you with those headphones? <laughs> yes, mic, or? yes, yes. Oh, they yes. did. And what kind yes. are they? <laughs> oh, um, I, it's provided by our IT team, a credit to our IT team. Actually. Yeah. Um, because Sean McMain, are you here? I saw that you're in the audience. I need your help at this point. Uh, I'm here, but I actually don't know which brand they got. I can't remember. Oh, okay. Yeah. So they're very good. I uh, just you can to see say that he is also having the same headset, though. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Okay. We need them at Poly U. I just Adam, are you listening? Mine. Sorry, yeah. I just looked at mine. They, the, it says the brand is Plantronics. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, Melissa. <laughs> thank you. Thanks. Okay, great. Thank you. Right. Okay. Um, we saw two questions there uh, in the chat room, uh, but maybe we, uh, Stephen said that question could be kept later. Mir um, Miranda got a question um, about the percentage of students not turning on microphones. That might be a question that a lot of us have. Maybe can we also leave it to the end? Or if anybody have immediate comments, then okay, we see some responses in the chat room. Hmm. I think this could be a discussion by yeah. itself. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, I think we, we, time is tight. Let's move on to the next session. So this is about effective tools for online teaching. There's three presenters, all from PolyU, Joe, Eric, and Johanna. Uh, Joe, are you ready? Yep. You see the topic is about the, uh, using the one uh, uh, app called Gong Ye. Uh, Gong Ye in Cantonese been speaking, okay? It is for the oral presentation assessment and also the uh, feedback. So I would like to uh, start introducing uh, what is Gong Ye, okay? So Sorry, Joe, um, you haven't opened your PowerPoint yet or you're, on the, you're sharing a different, different screen. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. Why? I, I can see my PowerPoint. So I need to close it and then open again, right? No, I think you need to share a different screen. Uh, uh, share a different screen. Okay. How about now? Can you see it? Oh, yeah. No. Um, um, yeah. Adam, I sent it to you uh, this morning. Uh, yeah, so, yeah. Uh, can, can you okay. have it too? Yeah. Let me share it for you. Yes, uh, thank you, thank you. Uh, wing it. Um, tell me when, when you want to move on to each um, slide. Yes, okay. So this is the topic, uh, the, the, the topic for my presentation. And then the second slide, please, Adam. Uh, <laughs> okay. Yep. I would like to divide my topic into uh, a presentation in four parts. Okay. Uh, so let's, let's, let's slide. Um, actually, it is a project. Uh, the $350,000 uh, 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 project, uh, uh, the departmental project by the biomedical lab and also the ELC. And uh, after the project, uh, the, this app okay, was released on the app, uh, Apple Store and Google Play in October 2018. And, uh, and the purpose of this Gongye uh, app is to improve the student presentation. Just imagine, for example, when you are teaching uh, uh, in a class, uh, some university teacher find that there is no obvious improvement okay, in students' presentation uh, through their, their studies. And for example, uh, they keep making the, a lot of mistakes even after tens of presentations. And sometimes uh, we want to promote the peer, peer uh, uh, feedback, but it's difficult to engage the students in listening to the other class okay, presentation. So uh, when A is presenting, the others may just you know, work on the other assignment, play on a mobile device for us while they're presenting. So, but when students use this app, uh, they will focus on listening to their classroom presentation, and then they will use their mobile phone to write down the comment. All right, so uh, next slide, please. Yeah, uh, actually this project involved uh, 42 teachers, including the teachers from the Hong Kong U, Education U, Hong Kong Community College, Poly U, and one secondary school. Altogether, 1,500 students have been involved in the, in, in the project, okay? And then uh, uh, during the uh, uh, first and second semester of uh, 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 
uh, uh, 18 and 19 uh, semester and have used it for the, our face-to-face, -face, uh, not only in the assessment, but also in, 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 in uh, the teaching and learning process. Okay. And then, um, but the, uh, last semester, semester one, now we cannot use it because uh, starting from the 11th of uh, November, you remember, Holy U has been uh, occupied by the protesters. Okay, so protesters did not allow us to do, use the Gongye app. Actually, we are not allowed to enter the office. So we did not use it. And, but now, and then the semester two, and then uh, because the whole semester we used the online, and then I used the Microsoft Teams platform. And then I tried to uh, incorporate this into our classes. So next slide, please. Yeah, actually, the support to the users is quite comprehensive. Okay. Uh, first of all, the, uh, uh, there is a very clear uh, uh, user guide for teachers and also a step-by-step -step user guide for the students. So uh, just before the assessment, I just, uh, you know, uh, send all the students the user guide, ask them to read it. And then uh, before the assessment, I'll give them the, the uh, very clear briefing on it. And then uh, uh, the education center, they offer twice, okay, two times the one hour workshop on the telling the teachers on how to use this uh, app. And, uh, and there is this provision of the technical support because after the project, uh, uh, it has been, um, I, uh, uh, a startup company was found, okay, to commercialize this app, okay? So we can find some technical support in case we have any problem. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah, uh, my course is about the presentation skill for research students in which all the students are studying MPhil and also PhD. So uh, after the co course, they need to plan, organize, and deliver the uh, academic presentation, either the, to confirm the proposal or the oral defense, the viva, all right? And at the end, they need to defend the research, okay? So next slide, please. Yeah, so the assessment, very simple, 15 minutes for presentation, five minutes for the Q&A, okay? We focus on not only the content delivery and also uh, the language, pronunciation, and fluency. So. Uh, during the, uh, uh, the uh, last semester, I have three classes of uh, uh, altogether 53 students have been involved in, in, in using this Gongye app. Uh, let's, let's, uh, yeah. And that it is a time synchronized with recorded link. That means uh, the students, okay, for example, when Peter was presenting for 15 minutes, uh, uh, Mary or John, and including me, we are typing the comment, okay? And we also uh, video uh, record the performance. And then we will send the video link of, uh, for example, uh, uh, John's uh, presentation to him, okay, given the previously uh, uh, no, uh, 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 ESO. And at the end, I will write down the uh, detailed feedback report and then send it to them. Anonymous means that, for example, when Peter is presenting, Mary wants to write down a comment, but Peter didn't know it's the comment from Mary, okay? So uh, the, the feedback can be very honest, okay? And then, so the, at the end of the whole course, the student can get the video link of his presentation, can get the detailed report, uh, report from the teachers and also can get the list of the comments from the other students. So, okay. uh, yeah. Joe, time's up, sorry. Okay, okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. Um, you. Okay, so yeah, next, uh, Eric, Eric Ho, are you ready? Eric, yep. <laughs> okay, so I'm ready. All right, so uh, I'm going, in the next five minutes, I'm going to talk about how we can use a online workspace to engage students in discussion while we are teaching online. And because we are teaching online, we are replacing place with space. And this space is very special uh, where thinkers, doers, learners, uh, and seekers can put their imaginations to work and not only hear what others are thinking, but see to especially important during the time of online teaching and learning. So if you look at the screen, you will see this is uh, the collaboration space. And uh, for the demonstration purpose today, I have asked some of my colleagues to help. First of all, you know, you can just simply zoom in and zoom out, okay, when you are teaching. I think it's more convenient than PowerPoint. And then the next function I would like to introduce will be the timer, a very long notes timer. I think I got four minutes left, so I can time myself instead of being warned by Adam. All right, so uh, and then uh, apart from this collaboration space, there are also other alternatives that you may want to consider based on your needs and interests and your subjects. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk about, the first, you know, activity that I will talk about is this map. 
Okay, so I got some poly U colleagues here. I just call them students at this moment. So students, would you please click on the emoji gallery on the left hand side? Okay, and then uh, pick one of your favorite emoji and tell me where you are located at this moment. So uh, they can just simply check the emoji to indicate where they are. Okay, so this is a very fun warm up game. Okay, especially if you can't see your students face to face. Okay, who moved my heart? Okay, I'm here. All right. Okay, so you can see when they are doing the activities, you can actually know where they are on this collaboration workspace. And they are enormous here. Uh, they have become very cute, uh, very cute creatures. Okay, some of them are koala, some of them are. Uh, 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 I don't want to say crap, but some of them are crap here, okay? And some of them are squids, okay, very cute. Okay, this is the first thing, okay? The next thing is the voting function. You know, you can see my students are not following me, so what I can do at this moment, I can just tell them, okay, hands off your mouse, and I'm going to bring you to where I'm located on this collaboration space. I can simply click my name and then click this uh, function, and then I will bring them to where I am on this collaboration space. So, and then I'm going to do voting. I can ask them to start a voting, like, uh, tell me where you are working at this moment, and each of you got one vote, and then next, and then I will begin the voting, okay, and then they will click. You can see 10 people are voting here, okay, I got one vote here, and then uh, when times is up, then you can just click uh, end voting session at the top right-hand corner, and then you can also see the results. Then you will see five people come from PolyU and one people comes from CTU. And then you can see the voting here is very different from Bedrock Collaborate or Zoom. Uh, this can be a image heavy voting session instead of having a test heavy uh, voting session. So, uh, and then you can also ask students to use sticky notes. They love sticky notes, okay? So students, would you please pick a sticky notes of your favorite size? colors, shape, and then you tell me, for example, this is an ESP course, one of the challenging interview questions. Okay, then they can just tell the question here. Okay, so can you tell me the question that you think most difficult in the job interview? So you can see they are working very seriously, okay? And you can also put some hyperlink here to connect with your uh, subject content. I've got 40 seconds left. Um, you can just put the hyperlink like this one is our academic skills workshop. For example, I'm talking about job interview skills and then you will see we got some workplace English workshop and then you can direct them to attend the online workshops if they are really interested. Okay, simply put the hyperlink, you can click open and then the students will be directed to the registration page. So apart from this, you will see, you know, uh, after they have done this uh, 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 sharing, you can just simply uh, move their sticker in order to see which one is more and which one you may have to address in your online class. So apart from this, let's go to the uh, number four. So again, students are not following me. I click this button again, and then they will be directed here. So Ten seconds. Three day exercise, and then you will see I got some stickers here already. So apart from the emojis and sticky notes, they can also use this arrow. For example, okay, what happens here? And then they can just put this. Okay, this is not really good, and I use discuss instead of talk about blah blah blah. And then you can also use these templates to do whatever exercise. And then I also put a Canada here, just in case they may want to make a consultation with me. I don't have to use the uh, Google Doc or whatever. Okay, Eric, time's up, sorry. Okay, meet me, please, thank <laughs> you. Thank you very much, Eric. Um, Johanna, yeah. over to you. Okay, can you hear me? Yep, yep, we can hear you. Uh, share your PowerPoint. Yep. Or, yep. Okay. Oh, sorry. Here. Okay. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm going to introduce this app called Flipgrid, uh, which I've used for short uh, student presentations and peer feedback responses. Uh, I don't know if any of you've used it before. Uh, I'd like to hear what you think then later on, maybe. 
Um, what I normally do at the beginning of the class when I introduce this to students is I ask them to download the app to their phones from the App Store or Google Play. Uh, and I've prepared an activity if any of you would like to try this out. Um, it works only if you have a Gmail account or if your uh, work email is a Microsoft account because you have to enter certain email domains. Um, so anyway, um, I started using this because I hadn't actually seen any of my students uh, by week nine or so. So I really wanted to give them uh, the opportunity to, to speak and to see each other. So basically, uh, let's first think about what Flipgrid is. Um, it's described as a video sharing tool or maybe a video discussion forum. You can also view it as a, a presentation practice tool and peer feedback platform. Uh, basically, you give your students some kind of prompt or question. They record a video response to that and other students then record a reply also using video. And after that, uh, the teacher can give feedback either in video format or in written form. And it's quite handy because uh, while the teacher needs to set up an account, the students don't. Um, it's called Flipgrid. Uh, and what a grid is, is basically your course or your class or your learning community. Uh, you can see here, I have three of them and I have set up one for us. So if anybody wants to try later on, you can. Um, after you've set up your grid, you set up various uh, topics in each of these grids. They're basically discussion topics, or you can see it as a, like an individual presentation task. Uh, so here in my course in scientific communication, I set up one topic, uh, and that was to present an adaptation plan that the students came up with. Uh, for each topic, you then provide various uh, instructions I try to keep these simple because, of course, I'm asking the students uh, to use their phones to do this. They, uh, they have um, more uh, detailed instructions elsewhere. Uh, then, as you can see here, I've tried to be very discreet, so you can't actually identify any of the students. But um, So what I normally do is I, I record a, a sample video, and as you can see, the students watch that video quite a lot. The students then each uh, record their responses to my prompt, uh, whatever that may be. Um, after that, uh, what I did was I had paired them up in advance and asked them to give uh, feedback to specific students. Uh, that comes here. As you can see, there are not as many replies to the videos as I would have liked. After that, uh, I give feedback. Uh, so this I had two sections here, so a total of about 33 students. I only got 21 original responses. And as you can see, only eight students actually gave feedback. So the success rate is a little bit high. Um, but the students were engaged. They did view the videos a lot. So I think that's very positive. Uh, I just wanted to show you, this is all my example. So it's me, me, me everywhere. Sorry about that. Um, so. This is supposedly a student video and the teacher can then give video feedback or written feedback. And what's super handy is that you can just email the feedback to the students. Uh, you can also give, you know, likes and you can add what the amazing there at the top is a vibe that will be available to all students to see. So you can give some more public feedback as well. Uh, so overall, I would say that the positives of this app is the fact that the students are quite engaged. It's very easy to use uh, for students. It's very easy for teachers to use and give feedback. It integrates with Microsoft Teams or you can put it in your mind or Google Classroom. It works with smartphones and even the students who say that their laptops or computers don't have a video, they can do this. And so for me, I saw and heard my students for the first time uh, last semester when we did this. The negatives uh, are that enthusiasm wanes. Um, while most of the students record the initial video, uh, the, the peer feedback was a bit iffy. And that means that some students don't get any peer feedback. I would probably change this in future by saying that uh, usually the most eager students are the first to post videos. So I would probably say that the first two videos, the first two students to post something should then give each other feedback and then build on that. Five more seconds. 
okay? The upload time, some students also said was a bit iffy. Uh, now, if you wanna try this out, I have set up an assignment here for you guys and to make it motivating, I thought it would be helpful. Um, you can use this uh, code, uh, QR code, and go and record your video. These are the instructions that I normally give my students. So you can uh, try this out yourself if you have downloaded the app. Or again, this is uh, instructions for my students. You can click on this link, the summer staycation link, and try this out. If you post a video, I promise I will respond. Johanna, maybe share, share that link in the chat and then people can okay. join it. Okay. Okay. Um, so thank you all. To, thank you for Joe, Eric, and Johanna. Um, any questions for, uh, for them about their tools? We had some in the chat, I know. Um, any questions? Eric, do you know if your, your app is available in the mainland? Does it work? Uh, yes, it's worked well last semester. I got some mainland students and there was no problem using Bureau with mainland students. Okay. Mm -hmm. And is there a fee? Um, I think uh, hmm. Sean asked. Yes, um, so far I have used the fee version. Uh, it was enough for the semester, but uh, as I, if I am allowed to, um, I. I have already shared the link uh, in the chat box, so you can just click it and then uh, Microsoft also got one very similar to this and I will try to explore if we can use the Microsoft one for free in the future. There are also other alternatives and yeah, some of them could have a longer free uh, trial period. Mm. Um, Yo Johanna, um, it's Flipgrid. I think that's free of charge as well. Yes. 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 Certainly. Yeah. Is there still a two-minute limit? I remember when I used Flipgrid before, there was a time limit. Um, yeah. I don't think so. Okay. Um, I think it went up to ten minutes. Do you remember, Adam? My students wouldn't talk for ten minutes. No, so no, they certainly wouldn't. Two minutes were fine. <laughs> um, I don't remember seeing a limit. No. Uh, and I was using it with with PolyU, we use a Microsoft account as well. So maybe that gave us extra minutes, maybe. Hmm. I have a question for you, Hannah. Yeah, hi. I, I, I tried, I really like that. And I tried similar things, um, getting students to give each other feedback. Um, and just as in your case, I, I couldn't get them to really participate, like very few of them did it. Did you like find out from them in any way why they're not doing it? Or do you have any hunches about why they're not doing it? Do you think they just don't see the value of something like that? I do think some of them don't see the value of it. Although that doesn't explain why so many of them recorded their initial video. Mm -hmm. I think that getting the feedback is what would be valuable. I mean, I thought it was valuable to hear what they were saying because it gave me a better idea of what they were doing. But uh, um, I, I only got some informal feedback and some of the students said, and these were actually the students who had given feedback, was that they would have preferred to give written feedback, which I thought okay. was interesting. Okay, so, did they say why? No, okay. you know, they're not that communicative, unfortunately. <laughs> right, right, right. Okay, thanks, it looks great. Yeah, it is good actually. Thanks. Okay, we have time for one more question. Or we'll go to the music. Questions or music? <laughs> <laughs> well, we we'll still have the overall discussion at the end. So just now we had six colleagues um, from different centers sharing with us the, um, you know, the teaching techniques and also some tools. So very, very useful. And um, uh, thanks for your preparation. So maybe we will go to music. Go to so music. yeah, we have a very special colleague, um, uh, ex-colleague, uh, Nick Florent. Nick, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay, so Nick used to, well, Nick, introduce yourself, please. Um, <clears throat> I used to work at the Poly U. I retired about five years ago. Uh, last year, I made a CD. 
Uh, that's my CD called Another Day on the Ferry. Um, and it has sold moderately well, <laughs> about 50 copies. Um, and I, last week, uh, Adam invited me to play some music for you. So I made some videos. I recorded some videos, especially for you last week. And uh, Adam's going to play some of them because he's the got them. The first song is uh, called Retirement Song. Can you tell us this a little is, bit about it? Yeah. Um, obviously, I wrote this soon after I retired. And the idea of the, the lyrics is um, to try and make you guys who are still working feel jealous. Okay. So <laughs> here's the retirement song. I hope it works. <laughs> I'm home, home as much as I can be. Yeah, I'm home, sitting on my balcony. I ain't got no deadlines, no bosses chasing after me. a job, but they laid me off. Now I work for myself, or I don't if I want <laughs> free. Ain't nobody chasing me. I got some money in the bank, and the wife is looking after me. my song you know you don't need those bosses just to get along i'm free ain't nobody chasing me i got a little money in the bank and a wifey looking after me yeah i'm home as I can be I'm home and I'm free and I'm sitting on my balcony I ain't got no bosses no deadlines hanging over me Well done, excellent. So the next song we're gonna have is called Lockdown. So Nick, tell us about Lockdown. Uh, I wrote this recently, of course. This is the most recent song I've written. It's about the lockdown. Um, and you may notice when I'm playing it that I'm looking slightly to the right because when you first write a song, it's very difficult to remember the words. <laughs> so I've got a cheat sheet next to me so I can, um, I can see the words, make sure I get them right. That's okay. all. Let's listen. Staying alone, working from home, going to a meeting on Zoom, taking a hit, watching some pics, feeling kind of 
are glad I got Netflix. City's in a lockdown, I'm staying in my home now, wondering what I'm gonna do next. Reading the news, dead in the blues, everything is coronavirus. Putting the paper down, trying to get my head around what is going on in the world. The world's in lockdown, I'm staying in my home now, wondering what I'm gonna do next. Going outside, go for a ride, gotta put a mask on my face. Nowhere to go, everything's closed, I can't seem to find a nice place. City's in lockdown, I'm staying in my home now Wondering what I'm gonna do next Groups of four, groups of eight Gotta go home, can't stay out late You gotta stay away, bro, I heard it on the radio Everything is in such a state City's in lockdown, I'm staying in my home now Wondering what I'm gonna do next People were panicking, don't go through that again Try to find a way to survive Out on the street again, have I still got a friend? Is everyone still alive? City's in lockdown, I'm staying in my home now Wondering what I'm gonna do next Yeah, the world's in lockdown, I'm staying in my hometown Wondering what they're gonna do next Great. We're getting a lot of great comments in the um, in the chat as well. So the third oh, song, nice. the third song is um, it's a shorter one, Harmonica Stomp. Um, and this is not original. This is um, based on a tune by Sonny Terry recorded in 1952, and this is my version of it. <laughs> You're getting requests. Uh, can you teach the harmonica? <laughs> I know you can um, you teach the um. What what you teach the mandalay? Is it? Or, I, I at the Poly U, I've taught the ukulele. Ukulele, yes. I did that for a couple of semesters. Um, I did have a couple of um, students for um, for the harmonica a long time ago. Um, okay. Alice, who's left a long time ago, and her voice. Um, we we had a few harmonica lessons. Yes, of course I can teach it. Okay, we've got Not one more me. one more final song, and this is the reason I never moved to a uh, outlying island. Oh the, yeah, about the running um, for the ferry. <laughs> yeah, running for the ferry. Again, I wrote this a, a little while ago. It's not really about me. Uh, it's on the album, and as you can see, it's played on a ukulele, not on the guitar. But it's it is about the problems of living on an island and taking the ferry every day. <laughs> Sorry.
sorry, it's my computer phone. <laughs> I'm running for the ferry, it's AM 639. I'm running for the ferry, it's AM 639. Gotta get the ferry, gotta get to work on time. I'm sitting on the ferry and sweating all over the floor. I'm sitting on the ferry and sweating all over the floor. Oh, when I get to Hong Kong, you know I'm gonna sweat some more. I'm working in the morning, yeah, I'm working in the night time too. I'm working in the morning, working in the night time too. A poor boy in Hong Kong, what else can I do? So, Nick, you have a CD available. Can we just see it again? CD is available, yeah, $100 with a download code. So okay. you don't need a CD player to play it. If you, want to, if, you want to, if you want the CD, you can contact me or contact Nick directly now. And well, I'll put you in touch with Nick so you can, you can buy it. Thank you very much, Nick. It was great. Thank you very much.